welcome back to the channel in the previous video we have understood the concepts of narcs neural network and its components if you have not yet seen the video the link is in the description you can have a look at it in this video we will discuss about the code which matlab uses in the background for developing a narcs neural network so if you see here this is the code which matlab uses in the background to run this narcs neural network so we'll go line by line and understand the code about what each line represents and what are the various functions which each line performs the first line indicates here is a training function as we have discussed in the earlier videos also this is the function which is used for training a neural network if you have not yet seen that video you can again find the link in the description about the basic components of a neural network so in this case like in training a neural network you can use various algorithms which define how a neural network is trained and how accurate it can be and etc so if we see what are the various uh, training functions which we have in matlab we can see that these are the functions which we can use for training a neural network so some of the prominent ones are levenberg markward bayesian regression conjugate gradient or gradient descent so these are the various functions and this is how these functions are represented in matlab you can put these words and the network trains based upon the functions which you choose so if we see here the matlab generally uses levenberg markward we have already discussed about this uh, in a short uh, form that this is a function which has uh, performed better in various uh, water resources researches by having a better computational performance and better accuracy so the matlab uses train lms default functions for neural network so if we go to the next line we can see that there are two functions which are input delays and feedback delays if you recall from our previous video we have discussed about the delay states which neural network uses in narcs so that it can get a better understanding about the data which it's trying to use it and get an output so in short if we see that input delay tells the network about how much data from the past should it take to get the present value whereas the feedback delay tells the network about how many days of the output which it should bring back into the network so that the training of the model can be better so by default the input and feedback delays in the neural network are 1 is to 2 takes 1 to 2 values either from the past or from the output values to give you a better result so that's it for input and feedback delays so now if we go to the next line about hidden layer size these are the layers which are in between the input layer and feedback layer which transfer the data and thereby they change the data using the weights which are in the hidden layers and convert the input to the desired output which we want so by default again in almost all the neural networks which matlab hosts it gives you a 10 neurons you can change these values whatever i am using in this uh, code to represent there are default values you have to remember that not always the default values gives you the better results so you might have to play with them so that you can get a better understanding about the data you are using and what kind of uh, values they are needed so until now we have given the input layer feedback layer and hidden layer the next thing is combining these and trying to get a network out of it so to develop a narcs network we use narcsnet which hosts all the input layer feedback layer and hidden layer with the training function to create a network which we'll use in further code to train the network if you see here there is a new component called open this open represents the type of looping system which narcs is using by default it is choosing a open loop but there is other component also called as closed loop which for now we will leave it and we will discuss in the further videos about what open loop does and what closed loop does and when we need to use this 
So in this line, network is created. After developing the network, the next thing is processing of the data. The general uh, processing things which NARCS takes into account is it tries to remove any constant rows which is represented by this because it tries to see the patterns if there is a constant rows for a certain length I'm quite not sure about how much length here but if it finds any constant rows which are causing issues to understand the network it tries to remove it whereas again this occurs after it converts the data to a certain range in this NARCS neural network in many of the neural network they have a certain uh, kind of uh, restrictions in the data format in NARCS it tries to convert the data from minus 1 to plus 1 which is performed by map minimax this function converts the input data which we are giving into minus 1 to uh, plus 1 so that it can understand the patterns in the data which we are giving so these two lines represent the conversion of data from uh, the general format to minus 1 to plus 1 and also removing constant although the data is converted from minus 1 to plus 1 it does not cause any issue because it takes normalization which we have discussed in the previous videos it will do normalization without causing any change in the patterns of the data you might see that the values are minus 1 plus 1 but the overall pattern is remaining the same so once you have processed the data the next thing is preparing the data you have all the data the input layers and feedback layers but you need to have it in a certain format right because until now we did not save it in any name we just gave input layer so and so feedback layer so and so so the next step is trying to save this data so if you see here we use a function called preparates this is the function which we use in MATLAB to tell the model that see I have given so and so data sets so takes these data sets and save it in the names which I am giving so that I can use it for the next modeling step so it takes the uh, network which we have created which has all the input functions which we have given like training function the input and feedback layers and etc and it saves in the names which we are giving for example x is the input xi is the delay states and uh, ai represents the layer delays and so on after this line is applied we get all the information about the input layer feedback layer and the delay states which we gave input delays etc in those names now we can use those data sets to train the network because we don't want to change the original data which we are giving right so we create a new data set which adds to the original data set and gives us a better result so once we have created the data next step in any neural network or any model you are developing is training testing and validation so in this you can either do it manually by trying to give certain percentage of data like creating training data, testing data and validation data separately and give it. We will emphasize this on the next video where we will be doing it ourselves to see about how a model is developed. So coming back to this, here we can give like by default it is taking a divide rand. This represents that it is dividing the data randomly and taking a certain set to training, certain set to testing and certain set to validation certain set to validation so what it is trying to do here is it is saying it will divide randomly but how much data is used in testing training and validation see here it gives you a value so this line is saying I am giving you a value use that value for dividing it so the next three lines which you see here are those values those are the training ratios validation ratio and testing ratio the general thumb off rule is either 70, 15, 15 or 60, 20, 20. You can use anything. It again depends on the type of data. And here it is dividing randomly, but you can also do it systematically. There are wide range of uh, types in which you can divide the data. Uh, and you can, for example, if you're dealing with a time series and you have a certain... Uh, 
period where you have peak values if you train the model only with peaks it cannot give you a good prediction of the low values and if you train the model only with lows it cannot give you a good prediction of highs so you need to prioritize your data in such a way that it contains both lows and peaks if you're training a, a model so this what part of the data to take training testing and validation depends on the data and its properties which you might have to check keenly and decide by yourself so that is how data is uh, divided in this code which is in the background of matlab again all the parameters you can change it based upon your usage that is the advantage of when we are directly running the code instead of using a graphical interface so once we have uh, done the dividing the data the next step is okay you have divided the data you have all the inputs let's say you are running the model so how can the model know that it's performing well or not it should have some measurement of its performance right so by default the model takes a mean square error which we can see here as the performance function if the mean square error is low for example there are certain values which we can give saying that if the mean square error is satisfied you can say that training is good and stop oh, i think we have seen this concept earlier in the feed forward neural network videos where the model runs until it satisfies certain limits so in the same way here it uses mean square error to check if the model is doing well or not so you can also represent it uh, pictorially by using a uh, graphs like performance functions which you can see here in the next line it's like it will plot the performance of the model about which run it's giving good results and how it is performing in training etc we can uh, see how it is performing for each run by seeing the values given in the graphs so we tell the model assign these so that i can understand how the model is performing so that is what these lines represent the next two lines if you see the next step now you have all the things assigned you thought about inputs you have given them you have thought about outputs and told the model how it should see so the next steps are just training and testing so if we see in the next line it's directly says training the network it takes the network which we created and uses all the inputs we generated and it trains the network so that we can get a good result that is what is represented in this line so once the training is done the next step is to understand how good the training is done right so we can use the codes which we have discussed in the earlier video which i'll be linking again in the description uh, to understand how the model is performing in training once we feel satisfied about okay the training is done good the next step would be testing the data so until now what we have done is we have given all the uh, training data here and it trained the model so the next step is testing the model so in this line we just give the test data set so that we can see okay this is the data which we did not give in the training so the model does not know its pattern but it should understand the basic uh, pattern of the 70 percent of the data and try to see okay this is how that i have trained myself so now i see this is the kind of pattern it has so this might be the pattern which the output should follow so it well, if we have done the training good the testing should give you a better result than training that sometimes either getting a same result or uh, a good result than training is considered a good model so this is the background code we can modify this code based upon our understanding because if you see here it gives the same name but here it already has given the function so this network directly takes this 15 percent whatever in the training it is automatically identifying it as training data and directly gives it here so for our use we can further change the code which I'll be showing in the next video where I develop the model. So this is how we can do it and develop a simple model. So this is the concept about the background code and what are the various functions which uses and why it uses. 
so i hope you have understood it if you have any doubts regarding it feel free to put your questions in the comment box i will come back to it as soon as possible in the next video we will see the model and how we can simplify this code further for our easier applications thank you for watching and i'll catch you all in the next video